trail of the forest predators. Really good news. This is a brand new camera, it's never even been used before. Why is it scary? I know, I'm sure it's fine. You've still got it. There's something up. Quite big walking around underneath the tower. I'm just trying to see what it is. That's a mind of its own a lot of the time. <laughs> to find the cats in this forest, we need to find their prey at the source. In the hottest months, drying riverbeds lead animals straight to shrinking waterholes. To drink, animals must gamble with their lives. The cats just need to lie in ambush. These hidden pools are a perfect place to meet cats after dark, when they're most active. Okay. Our arsenal of cameras gives us the ability to see through the night. The starlight camera takes available light from stars or moon and magnifies it, allowing us a cat's eye view of the forest. Motion-triggered camera traps silently monitor the game trails using invisible light. The infrared camera brings us face-to-face -face with predators and prey. Warm-blooded mammals can't hide from our thermal camera. And then there's our secret weapon. A cable, 18 meters above the forest floor, silently carrying remote cameras to the action. All of this unique technology has just arrived in Costa Rica's Santa Rosa National Park. The aim, to film one waterhole with cable cameras and remote cameras, as well as camera traps spread further afield. The location is perfect. A drying riverbed that attracts prey and camera-shy predators from a wide area. But it's a very ambitious plan. Nothing quite like this has ever been attempted before. Fifty years ago, most of this land was pasture, and ranchers shot cats on sight. Now, Santa Rosa and the surrounding area is one of the most important natural refuges in Central America, and the daytime forest is full of life. But the life we're looking for is normally concealed by trees. Four months previously, the river flows and Santa Rosa is a very different place. Martin Dorn and cable expert Tim Fogg are greeted by the heaviest rain in decades. The river is much higher than usual, so just getting around is a challenge. Tripods, eh? Who needs them? Martin and Tim are looking for strong trees to anchor the heavy camera cable. So it normally, when it's dry, it extends west from those rocks down. No, no, it's just there. Just about here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's not even that deep. 
Once they locate the best pool, they head up the hill to find a clear view. They soon realize there's no tree strong enough to support a cable, so they'll have to build a steel platform to take the weight. I mean, yeah, let's just establish that it's possible. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah. Or, or what, you know, because we might say, well, the only way to do this is we have to have a 20-metre scaffold. At the other end. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, that is, would be a bad that thing. Be, that would be a very bad thing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, lots is possible. Always the question is, is how, how much time and effort? Getting a cable across this valley is one of the toughest challenges Tim's ever faced. Do you think there's some chance we're not going to be able to do this? There is a distinct possibility, Martin, and there always has been. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The dry season winds drive water out of the forest. The river shrinks again until only pools are left. Jaguar scientist Eduardo Carrillo has studied cats here for 25 years. He guides us to the most likely filming sites. He knows the cats are here through his pioneering use of camera traps. Ocelots, small, shy rodent hunters. Pumas, 60 kilo deer hunters. and jaguars, the biggest cat in the Western Hemisphere, yet one of the hardest to see. Is that this waterfall here? The team are ready. Martin begins their hunt, scouting for any signs of cat activity. We had a remote camera here for a couple of days, and we did see an ocelot. For me, well, let's... There's a footstep that, but that, that's a cat. Yeah, no, perfect. It's an, an ocelot footprint. Good eye, Martin, <laughs> really good eye. <laughs> yeah. Downriver, camera woman Justine Evans finds her own evidence. Look, look, look at this. That is a cat. It's large. That's a puma or a jaguar. That's really good news because we've got about four different pools here to choose from, all within a kilometre stretch. And to see some evidence of a big cat coming into this particular pool is a really good sign. It's time to build the overhead camera rig. Everything needs to be carried in by hand. A seven meter high platform will anchor the cables and serve as a control center for the remote cameras in the valley. The steel cables arrive. Carrying these 150 kilo weights to the site is just the beginning. Stretching them 350 meters across the valley will test the entire team. Crossbows shoot thin line over the trees, but only 100 meters at a time. Yeah, I can see it. I just, uh, I just paused up again. This is just getting worse and worse. Really. Three, five. Then we must untangle the line before firing the next length. Three, fire! It's a major challenge, and everyone's feeling under increasing pressure. Be sure we want. Why, why is it scary? I know. I'm sure it's fine. You've still got it. It's still going back to the tree. Nothing scary about it. My confidence has gone since it couldn't open the box. 
Yeah, I'm chuffed with that bit, yeah, I am. I get chuffed with, with each bit, but as I say, then you go, oh, God, the next bit. Because the next, the next one, the cables are getting heavier and heavier, the pulley systems are getting bigger and bigger. We're into big winches and things now, so... A week later, we finally get the line across the valley and into position. Now the team needs a volunteer to zip line down the cable and clear away branches. Jim Spickler has a head for heights. Pretty exciting. Continuing on, I got about 100 meters completed. Got about 200 more. right now. Cable is ready for action. The dry season tightens its grip and the pools are shrinking fast. It's time to break out our special filming equipment. Among our most important tools are the trap cameras. They detect movement and record automatically. We want to set them in the forest as soon as possible. Cameraman Nick Turner has worked in this difficult location before. He has some good ideas for places to set camera traps. They'll offer a fascinating window into a secret world. We'll also need to rig remote control cameras to track and film our targets from the tower. The camera will move on a dolly suspended from the cable at our command. If we can fine-tune its controls. String is a reliable piece of technology. All this stuff runs out of battery and has a mind of its own a lot of the time. <laughs> Cable dolly. Raising its first. How things are how do you ready? I'm just gonna turn the power on. Mm -hmm. I'm not really happy with that. Oh, well, I'm, gonna talk to <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to be able to run this through my hands. With the gremlins almost under control, we can start looking for cats on the move. The first 48 hours of scanning prove how elusive the cats are but we know they are near. Then, we have a lucky break. Out patrolling the nearby beach, one of Eduardo's students, Luis Fonseca, stumbles across a remarkable sight. A young jaguar killing a nesting sea turtle. His camera phone captures the first moving images of a jaguar from Santa Rosa. The next morning, Justine visits Luis to gather clues about the Jaguar's movements. Hi, Luis. Hi, nice to meet you, Justine. Uh, Luis hi. thinks the Jaguars travel between hills inland and the beach. Uh, it's, uh, two and one of the best routes is along our riverbed. Oh, great. Turtles come ashore to lay their eggs under cover of darkness. And sometimes, a Jaguar is waiting. It uses powerful jaws to puncture the turtle's skull, killing it quickly. Luis takes Justine to the area. If the jaguar returns, 
A trap cam will be waiting. Once the lid's closed, we can leave it running for two months. Back at the tower, news is good. Bye. Are your camera running? Yes. The dolly's working well now, Goodbye. and there's no wind. At least we've got a camera in position, so if anything does happen, we can see it. As darkness falls, the night shift prepares for another mission, making sure everything is safe and secure. Okay, let's go then. Oh, we need to level that head as well. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it fell off the cable, the first thing that would take the full weight of all this on the top of the two cameras on the bottom, there would be probably about 50,000 quid's worth of stuff in here. A clear, still night welcomes the camera out. The bright moonlight gives the starlight camera an aerial shot of this amazing new world. When we add our thermal camera to pick out warm mammal bodies, the forest turns transparent. I mean, I've not seen anything like this. It's really cool. Stop there. It looked like something moving in the trees. Exposed rocks retain the sun's warmth, outlining the course of the dry river. There's definitely something down in the riverbed. Slow down, stop, stop, stop. drinking by the pool. But there's a problem. Our control hardware is overheating. We need to keep the computers open to cooling air. <laughs> it's biscuit time. We found out that this is the optimum space that the laptop needs to be open is exactly the same as the packet of biscuits that we get, so. <laughs> it's time to wedge a pack in the laptop. The fortune of the project now depends on a pack of cookies. the cable cam reveals more and more wildlife. A guan bird comes within range. We capture an elusive tree porcupine creeping through the branches. A huge rodent wanders below the dolly. It's a paca a very rare creature in Santa Rosa. With our eye in the sky up and running, the team's confident it's only a matter of time until the cats appear. But we can still only see part of our target area. We plan to set more remote cameras on the forest floor to cover other angles. As moonlight gives way to sunlight, the daily roasting of the forest continues. Despite the heavy rain a few months ago, only a few pools remain. It's now 40 degrees in the shade, and the monkeys are feeling the heat. They keep to the few green areas of forest left, where they can still find moist fruits to quench their thirst.
Down on the forest floor, the dry leaves are now as crisp as potato chips. The cats are more likely to use our riverbed for silent stealth. It's the perfect time. But there are problems with the remote cameras. It's got to be said. I didn't realize it was going to be. Have this, this heat was going to knock out the cameras like it did, actually. Can the camera traps withstand the soaring temperatures? Hey, tapir. That's great. That's a fantastic shot. That's fantastic. That's a really good one. It's a great shot. <laughs> Weighing in at over 300 kilos, Bird's tapir is the largest land animal below the United States. These distant relatives of the rhino use the same paths daily to water, but they are hardly ever seen. Three deer. Excellent. Oh, good. Nice to get more watery stuff, won't it? Yeah, I should have planned it right. But I think we should do what you said, which is point the camera at the, at the pool. Unexpected creatures reveal themselves. Coyotes and a family of raccoons. We're seeing a lot of potential prey, like deer and agoutis. The predators can't be far behind. Oh That's my god! <laughs> it's a puma! <laughs> it's like there's no doubting that shot. There it is. It's our first cat. The most widespread cat in all the Americas. The puma. It's 60 kilo weight can bring down almost any animal at once. Eduardo's studies show that it's mostly after deer. So the cats are here. And we've more camera traps to view. That is unmistakably a jaguar. Another incredible image up close and very personal. Jaguars roam great distances, but they tend to remain in one area for a week or so, which means there's a good chance we'll see this cat again. Now that oh, is a cat. That's a, <laughs> that yeah. is a proper cat. <laughs> Howard put this one in. Later that night, we mount the starlight and thermal cameras on the cable. On the ground, we deploy infrared and thermal cameras, hoping to shoot the Jaguar's return. Within minutes, the thermal camera locks onto a moving heat source. Stop there, stop there. I think it's a deer. That's a deer. What's it doing? It's eating. Look at that. Okay, we're just going to watch it. The deer looks like it's coming for a drink. The perfect moment to attract a predator. This is a unique moment. Up till now, 
Wild tapirs are practically unfilmed. They're too secretive. And here, we have a female tapir, completely unaware of cameras, beaming her live image back to the tower. It's a fantastic chance for the crew to observe new behavior. We've seen a tapir walk down and start bathing, which is awesome, I wasn't expecting at all. In these dry conditions, tapirs need water daily and use regular bathing spots. This is now the only pool for miles. Soon, a second tapir appears, a male. The two seem cautious. It looks like they know each other. He may recognize her scent, because he probably can't see her in this level of darkness. Our infrared and thermal cameras give us an intimate view of one of Costa Rica's most mysterious creatures. Their gentleness hides a different nature. Hunters say that a threatened tapir is very dangerous to humans and cats alike. Even a big cat might think twice before ambushing this peaceful scene. First time I've seen something like this. It's, it's, it's really good. Nice. You see that? It's just taking off and landing on the taper of some sort of bat. That can only be a vampire, it's drinking blood. The crew now realize they're in vampire country and may be targets themselves. There's bats everywhere. I think they must be here for the deer. From the ground-based thermal camera, it looks like the deer are also in the vampire sights. Once they've landed, the bats use their own heat-detecting sensors to home in on their warm-blooded meals. But the deer can hear the hopping vampires. They're having none of it. On the remote camera, Nick notices a mysterious shape glowing in the bushes. Oh, well, I don't quite know. It's in, in amongst the branches. Yeah, there's something, isn't there? There's a hot spot back there. Something through those branches. It's definitely a cat, but I just can't see what it is. I'm trying to work out what A rustling toad attracts the cat's attention. I think it's just uh, checking out the pool. As it leaves the pool, a trap cam picks it up and reveals a new species of cat for the team. It's a male ocelot patrolling his territory. They prey on rodents, even monkeys, but stay well hidden when the big cats are around. It's a fantastic sighting for the crew. Another mystery cat of Santa Rosa. So it looks like we've got a cat. We're on a high. Then, disaster strikes. That's really dramatic news from Nick. One of the cables has collapsed. 
The overhead cable let go of its moorings, plunging our cameras and dollies six meters into the trees below. The cameras could be destroyed. We'll have to release the tension. But it could have been worse. This was the cable that Jim was climbing on only a few hours ago. And um, he could have come down. I mean, he would have, he wouldn't have. Like a vampire, the starlight camera's light-sensitive lens will burn out at sunrise. Put up. It's just going to climb, or do you think we should just try and get the angle of this right? I'm going to pull it back and just try and re-engage it by rolling it down the hill. No, they don't need to. They don't need to. The, the, the team must send someone up into the canopy to rescue the stranded camera. The rig survived the initial impact, but if the cable collapses further, the project will be over. I think after this, take the camera off and lower it down. The dolly is stuck. If knots come apart. As night turns to dawn, the crew face one of their greatest challenges. Could you just gently pull the, just put tension on it, just gently pull it. We just want to see what happens now. Down towards the end. Yeah, it's never going to get to the end of the friction. To get the dolly down, we'll have to dismantle it in mid-air, a piece at a time. You need more tension, more slack up there. That's entirely unfair, it's subjective. I believe the process is painstaking and dangerous. Unfortunately, the pulley's going to be on top of it as well. By early morning, the last sections are safe. But it's a mess. And it'll take a couple of days at least to put it all back together. It's a huge blow to the team. Time is short. The approaching rainy season will soon put an end to filming. When the dolly's ready, work resumes on searching for the mysterious cats of Santa Rosa. <sighs> this is tremendous fun. With the dolly back online, we're ready for the final sweltering week's vigil to see big cats in the wild. Turn it um, clockwise. We keep the valley and waterhole under 24-hour observation. But in the searing daytime heat, the cats are keeping a low profile. Oh, there's a heron. It's back. We are seeing so much prey our chances of spotting a jaguar are increasing. The trees have now lost most of their leaves, giving us a clear view along the riverbed. Take one off. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Our window of opportunity is finally open. Say when. The temperatures reach 45 degrees in the shade. If animals want to drink, they must come here. Nick's trained eye spots some movement. It's a puma, right by the waterhole. It's looking over towards the waterhole. I'm still running. She's up. Keep it steady, Howard. A mother and fawn are drinking just 200 meters from the puma.
Suddenly, monkey alarm calls fill the air. The mother deer isn't taking any chances and leads her fawn to cover. In daylight, these sharp-eyed capuchins can spot predators in the distance. They mob cats when they find them, letting every creature in the forest know danger is coming. These alarm calls are one good reason why cats prefer the night. As the sun sets, the moon casts a bright glow over the forest. Up in the tower, the crew prepare the starlight camera. In such bright moonlight, conditions are perfect for spying on the riverbed. Quietly and carefully, the team ease the dolly out over the trees. About 200 meters. Could be imagining it. We've just found a deer uh, with a thermal camera. And it's in the forest. And it's about 100 meters, probably a water hole. And it's, uh, it's just sitting in the bushes. And uh, not moving at all. It's just been grooming itself. And uh, it's a very dark night, so I wonder if it's just done. Uh, it's a strategy for, uh, you know, surviving a dark night just to sit still in a thick bush and not move. Creeping through the forest, this deer could be taking a chance. Our trap camera picks it up at the waterhole, just the sort of prey that would attract a big cat. The thermal spots a nervous tape here on the edge of the pool. Okay. The team reposition the overhead camera. Something unseen startles the tape here. Just run at something there, just turn it around. Not too far, keep coming. On the overhead camera, Nick picks up a new heat source. Something coming in, it's not a deer. It might be a cat. I don't think it's an ocelot. It's a puma, and it's on the prowl. Deer alarms sound in the distance. The deer listen intently. I think it's a something mouse or a rat or something. It looks like it's talking down the riverbed. Getting closer. 
The puma is within striking distance. The deer freeze. If they bolt now, the cat will be on them in seconds. gives the cat away. The game's up, and the puma slinks off. Oh. Just went on and on, didn't it? Went right under the cable. I know, I know. Better go and save it now. Back it up. Back it up. Right, it's back. I think that's a cause to celebrate. It is, yeah. It's cute. It is. I might have to have a beer. <laughs> the 6 a.m. beer. Yeah. Excellent. In the excitement and stress of the cable and water hole, the trap cams have been neglected. It was on this beach. A jaguar was seen killing a turtle a few weeks ago. Nick rushes back to camp with some good news. First one I look like is the jaguar. I think it's just going to come out there and wander around, isn't it? It's quite happy to... It's obviously the resident jaguar, you know. What, male or female? The trap cams have recorded more jaguars. That's it, we've got a jaguar. It's a jaguar there, yeah. I'm not going to high-five you because I said... <laughs> no, that is absolutely awesome. Yeah, it's good. Did you? Yeah. Martin calls in jaguar expert Eduardo to share our success. <laughs> That's beautiful. It's a jaguar. 100 kilos of big male, sharpening his claws and scent marking his territory. That's beautiful, beautiful, just beautiful. The trap cam near the beach reveals an extraordinary scene. Another male finishes his turtle dinner. I mean, that's just that beautiful just animal, huh? Beautiful. So you reckon that's what, what sort of age is that cat, do you think? I think it's an, let me see, it's an adult. Yeah. Not even our invisible infrared flashes can disturb its meal. Oh, that's pretty really nice. Beautiful. It's too beautiful, huh? It's very in perfect position. Yeah. This is an incredible result. Images of jaguars in the wild are extremely rare. Our night vision technology has led us into the mysterious world of these forest cats and revealed them as never before. The final camera trap holds the biggest surprise.